hi guys and welcome back to another video if you're new here my name is Mercy and I am usually your main host on this channel but today we are being joined by my cousin and friend her name is and we are going to be talking and discussing cultural differences and similarities that we have mm -hmm. between Australia and Kenya in terms of people mm -hmm. um, Maybe I'll just start by saying, like every other place on this planet, the people are very friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we do have people that are not awesome, but most of the humans in Australia yeah. are good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, are good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, moving on, maybe mm -hmm. we can look at the food mm -hmm. in terms of, in Kenya we appreciate mtuam, tura, pale, you know, and different kind of food that we get to enjoy in delicacies. Not to mean it's only Kenyan food, but uh, you can decide to go to a restaurant, yeah. eat by the roadside, mm -hmm. you know, there yeah. are all these different yeah. things to yeah. enjoy from. How is it in Australia compared to here in Kenya, mm -hmm. in terms of the taste of food, at the same time cost, mm -hmm. yeah. Would you trust him to a mutura in Australia? Is it uh, even something that exists? <laughs> well, um, that is a very good question. So, mm -hmm. when it comes to food, uh, we're talking about street food. We do have street foods, but mm -hmm. on occasion in Australia. Like, unlike where by in Kenya, you can just walk out of your house and buy gideri or mutura on the road mm -hmm. or by the road. Um, in Aussie, that's not something that you're going to find. Mm -hmm. You have to go to specific places at specific times to buy street food. Oh. Um, the same foods, you can buy them in the mall. And one interesting difference in terms of our food culture is the type of foods that we eat and mm -hmm. how we prepare our food. Yeah. For example, like, um, you know, as we have grown up with things like ugali, mm -hmm. uh, gideri, Skumawiki, uh, Gideri, you will definitely not find Gideri in Australia, <laughs> especially if you're coming from Kenya. And uh, Ugali, yeah, you can um, buy Unga, but uh, it's high priced and it's also South African brand. Most of that is not from Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, then when it comes to the taste, completely different. Like, wow, hey, and yeah, there's no way for me to describe the difference in that one. But I'll just say it's not different good by my mouth per you know my taste buds yeah. um and it's not to say that it's bad food and then in terms of preparation our culture and socialization is we fry a lot mm -hmm. using like oil, onions and um yeah. oil and um we also we do a bit of boiling but not as much so in australia the culture of their food preparation i would say in my observation was mostly oven baked mm. barbecues and uh just microwaved food so they even sell ready food in the supermarket oh. like all you have to do is go and microwave it i think there is such in kenya but it's not popular for the common mona mm -hmm. so for them that is that is the everyday kind of life right um what else did you ask me in terms of cost obviously mm. it's costly if you're living in australia to buy food than it is in kenya mm. money i would spend in a month to live in australia is probably going to serve me for two or three months wow. yeah in okay. kenya mm. okay does your housing allow you to have like probably home farms such yeah. that you can actually get to avoid the cost of buying food from the Mm. and how does that work? I see where you're coming from, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so, we had like an upcountry of WA, which is Perth. The city is Perth, rather. Mm -hmm. the WA is the state. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have farming. It's, it was difficult. Or maybe I lived in the city, but I know they are farmers. Mm -hmm. You have to drive just the way we do have to drive out of town, out of Nairobi to go to the Ushago, mm -hmm. you do. So people farm there, but they don't do like Mahindi and Maragwe, like it's not large scale farming whereby mm -hmm. you can say you can um, stock that for your family. Mm -hmm. I saw uh, most of it was either wine, winery, they have wine farms. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, winery. <laughs> what do we, do we call those plantations? <laughs> grapes, That's they wine. grow grapes to make wine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That one, and then also um, they do livestock, yeah. with lots of livestock, and uh, well, I haven't, I can't remember anything else that I've seen, but we do have people who who grow vegetables, Asians, mm -hmm. uh, and then they come and sell in the market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that is not everything about the food culture comparison, mm -hmm. but it's a, a bit enough to give someone a highlight of what to expect. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, All right, that's quite something. Maybe the next thing we can look at transport. In Kenya, there's the matatu culture. <laughs> Be it the noisy from the dunda dunda to <laughs> the more chill, yes. uh, probably old school yes. kind of transport. Yeah. But Very what's the main good. difference between Kenya and Australia, even in terms of how you pay? Yes, yeah. Um, oh yes. wow, good. You you raising very good points. Um um you're really like um helping me brainstorm on what to say. Thank yeah. you. So transport wise, mm-hmm. the first part that you asked is about matatu the matatu culture that if you go to australia forget about it because they are not going to find there you're going to find buses like the kbs mm-hmm. so obviously dunda wapi mm-hmm. kaput <laughs> mm-hmm. like yongo ma loud loud how to get eh it's not there um the way we pay you remember mega rider oh my gosh you were <laughs> <laughs> you told on yourself about uh-huh. that yeah. age anyway yeah those who are old like me okay. you know about mega rider so the most used mode of payment is mm-hmm. cards so you load money onto your card mm-hmm. and then you tap and pay at mm-hmm. the bus yeah. inside the bus or at the bus stop so they have bus stops and that's also something that is very different when it comes to uh, our culture mm-hmm. is our matatus will mama anywhere Mm, we can panda from any point mm. or rather most of the time we have bus stops like every single place right mm. but there we have bus stops specific place and the buses come within a time frame so there's like a schedule or a timetable mm-hmm. if you miss one that's it you have to wait for the other one um the other thing akuna conductor it's only the driver so you, you if you're going somewhere you stand at your bus stop you hail mm-hmm. hail is Simama dere mm-hmm. dere will if you don't hail they don't know it's mama, simama. they just yeah. go so the bus will stop and mm-hmm. then the the doors are automatic so they press up a button and then the doors open and then you get in and mm-hmm. then you tap your card and then you sit and then when it comes to a light there's a button for a bell every single like sitting row or something on the frame somewhere you'll find a button a red button you're mm-hmm. supposed to click or press on that button mm-hmm. and then the bell rings next to the driver and then he knows you're supposed to alight on the next, next stop mm-hmm. and then he will stop yeah. and then he will press on the door thing again and then you get out and then you stop and say hi or say thank you and then you're gone like that okay question <laughs> yeah so if i'm to pay for the bus once i walk in mm-hmm. how are you able to predict i actually have money to pay it's Let's up it's up to you it's your responsibility if you come without money you you don't go so if you let's say you hail the bus mm-hmm. um and then the bus the driver will stop and then open the door mm-hmm. and uh, you're supposed to pay before you go sit down or you ah. you tap that ka tap and pay thing mm-hmm. is at the driver's seat mm-hmm. around there mm-hmm. so there's like a cabin for the driver yeah so if you don't tap and you mm-hmm. don't pay you don't go you go out you have to step out again ah, and then they so. will leave you there there's no bargaining even it's a set and it's a set fee if you're paying two dollars yeah you have to pay two dollars so there's um prices for the young people mm-hmm. like students they pay a different price yeah. and then yeah there's a different rate and then there's prices for the old people and then now there's a regular common adult mm-hmm. and then there's children who don't pay okay yeah so if i'm a student and i haven't carried my student id so how does that play you out? pay the full fare for a, a special or a regular adult uh-huh. so you only pay special if you have evidence that you are in that category if mm-hmm. you're a student you have to provide a student card um which usually you have like a smart rider which we call it's that card yeah. and then we have a smart rider for old or senior people mm-hmm. and then smart riders for kids who are in school so it's graded differently wow mm. So the receipt that you get given by the driver mm-hmm. when you pay is valid for up to three hours unlike here when you pay you pay and then you go so if if i was heading let's say to some place called kasuku yes yeah i'm done with my errands uh maybe within an hour mm-hmm. and there's a bus coming mm-hmm. so it needs to you take use the back. same you use the I same ticket the same yes for the same fare the roads are demarcated very mm. well like we have a bus lane there's a specific line for only buses if you're found driving on that lane mm-hmm. you get fined um uh, how does the finding work when it comes to find the finding system they have cameras situated somewhere along the road mm-hmm. so for example say you're driving and you're over speeding you're not going to meet the carouse like the way we have here mm-hmm. the, that is the police if you're not from kenya and you can't negotiate and bargain and there's no way to 
to correctly mm-hmm. maneuver your way out of a, a mistake that you did or a transport error that you did yeah. is it error or <laughs> infringement they call it infringement mm-hmm. you get uh, snapped by that um, camera on the road and then the within two weeks you receive a mail in your postal uh, mm-hmm. box and um, then you are given to two days to pay that fine there's no negotiation but mm-hmm. if you know the driver who was driving that car mm-hmm. you're given a chance to apply and appeal yeah but you have to provide the person who was driving right, right. And they have something called the merits on driver's license. Mm-hmm. Every time you're fined, you're also una minus wezo points. Okay, mm-hmm. fixture 15 points, una nyanga nyo license. Even for one wow. year. I was it drive. No kipatikana. Jela. It's that serious. Um, not to mean that I enjoy yeah. um, <laughs> taking up offenses, mm-hmm. but what's like the jail term if someone is to be imprisoned? Hmm. I wouldn't say that I know because mm-hmm. I have never really gotten to that extent of even wanting to know, but I know I have been fined mm-hmm. a lot. Personally, over speeding, whew, it's been the Kenyan blood in me. Mm-hmm. When I first went there, mm-hmm. I, I got a lot of fines. I know that people got away without fines, but I am guilty. Yeah. And that disciplined me to the point that right now, I I don't know if I can over speed as I did before I left. Mm-hmm. Because I also, the thing is I was driving before I left Kenya, so mm-hmm. I had already gotten into the Kenyan driving culture. Yeah. And the driving culture in Australia is totally, totally different. different. And the other thing I've gotten a fine for is being on the phone while driving. Ah, and it's a big fine. Yeah. $400, my friend. 400 times 80, 3,000, oh, and it's 32K. 32K. Yeah, I paid that, 32,000 for just being on the phone. Now, Mimi, nilishika adabu. Never again. Never again. Never again. I've never. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's how um strict and disciplining their system is okay. yeah so there's no corruption like uh okay she come she come in well so maybe another question mm-hmm. when you leave kenya you had your own kind of license yes so for you to move to ozi yeah and of course be able to drive the system there mm-hmm. how does that work to the point of you getting a license in ozi mm, very good question Annette. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait. so okay um when you go to australia and you have a kenyan license Mm -hmm. you are given up to six months to convert that license and you're able to transfer it and get an australian one Mm -hmm. however you do have to do a road test Mm -hmm. so there's a theory and a road test Mm -hmm. so i also did a a, a test and then when you pass Mm -hmm. they give you their license yeah it's very easy i tell you for sure even if you've been to a Kenyan driving school, mm. you will definitely feel that okay. test. <laughs> because I feel like this is something I should tell people who are interested in to go into Australia or you'll be studying and mm. then you have to convert your license. My advice is, if you land there, do not take yourself to do the road test. Mm. Like, don't walk in and say you're going to do a test. You will fail. And big time. Just go through an instructor from Australia get one or two lessons yeah streamline yourself and try to align yourself with that road safety and standard and the rules of the country and i guarantee you're going to pass yeah people have failed up to seven times wow i know yeah yeah it's a very tough system to just spend yeah <laughs> it's not one of those easy ones are you guys driven in i'll tell you about my experience here yeah um on my exam day when mm-hmm. I was doing my driving to mm-hmm. you know the glory school and mm-hmm. whatever driving mm-hmm. so I don't want to mention the specific yes. name of the institution yeah. so let's just call it uh, X driving school yes. so when I was glory you're taken to some place and you meet the cops there and everyone else and wherever you do the test from so you yes. walk out of your theory test as you get to the, the track yeah the mm-hmm. track or whatever mm-hmm. depending on which license you're yes. applying for mm-hmm. how does it work in ozi okay <laughs> <laughs> okay in my scenario mm-hmm. um i went and booked a test drive with an instructor mm-hmm. a registered instructor and then after assessing me, he was like, obviously, I mean, he wanted to make money too. Mm-hmm. He was like, oh, you need to do one or two lessons and then you will go and do your test. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was like, dude, I'm a Kenya, I'm a drive Kenya. How bad can this be? So I'm going to test. I'm going to 
I would rather nearly anguka. I don't even know whether it was a fair fail. But the next time, the same like um the same week I went and booked with that same instructor. I can peleka two lessons just kunyonesha sju ni 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 ni. And then the I I let him present me to the the and the tra- the traffic office where mm-hmm. I was booking my test mm-hmm. and imagine I passed that test. Wow. So I don't know, but it is to answer your question is very individualized. Mm-hmm. So you don't go as a group as we do in Kenya. Yeah. Yeah, so you go by yourself. And um the other cultural difference when it comes to transport and the infrastructure setup of the Aussie and Kenya mm-hmm. is uh, guys start driving as young as 16 years old. Mm-hmm. We are not allowed to drive at 16. Well, we you start are at 18. Your court, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Well, even if you drive you won't be having a license because yeah. the legal age for us is 18. Mm-hmm. The legal age uh, out there is 16. Mm-hmm. So Google Maps. Have you ever used Google Maps to go anywhere? Well, it depends if it's a new place. Mm. Maybe yes. And because well, you're right, even in generation Z, eh? Uh-uh. Z, in it was Z. No, it's <laughs> just that I'm adventurous and I know my way around places. I mm. currently drive on Google Maps in kind of places in your city, mm-hmm. but I would be honest to say that I didn't know about it. in terms of the driving part mm-hmm. until we get the OZ. Mind you, most of us Kenyans don't even have smartphones. Mm-hmm. Most of us I mean no common man in Kenya. Most any road stop even if it's here in in this wa Kenya. Mm-hmm. But what we need to make ya kamulika mozi when we are growing up mm-hmm. and we only get to buy smart smartphones to get my university, right? Mm-hmm. So at what point do we use Google Maps to go anywhere? Yeah. The one thing we haven't touched on is bicycles. Is it like an Yeah, of uh, yes, yes, it's an essential means of transport especially for students, mm-hmm. school kids and people working. As I said, you can hardly 100% rely on public transport because mm-hmm. of the way it's set up. Yeah. Not that it's not efficient and it's not good, it's just the setting up mm-hmm. which means for example, unataka kwenda job 8 mm-hmm. and the bus is coming at um, maybe 7. Would you rather and maybe you know place you know cycle for 15 minutes would you rather you leave your house at 6:30 or 6:45 so that you yeah. you take the 7 o'clock or you stay home and cycle to work for 20 minutes yeah. which is like maybe utoke home 7:30 you see what i mean mm-hmm. and then also um like if you're trying to move from one place to another and the schedule is like long you know mm-hmm. it's easier to commute using a bicycle so it's a popular thing and mm-hmm. also we do bicycles for leisure which is something that we really do in Kenya then at the same time uh-huh. um i have seen countries where you have literally parking lots for bicycles yes it's all like in Kenya you need yes. your bike somewhere yes. and start worrying uh-huh. about uh-huh. Uh-huh. who will steal yep 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 they have. you're right so how does that work bicycles yes you have specific areas to park your bike mm-hmm. with actually even like those to chuma i don't even know what they they, they call them now una cuz most of the bikes utakuwa na padlock mm-hmm. padlock una lock bike yako na unaenda Okay so moving on maybe we can talk about the language what do most people speak <laughs> yeah. and what's the, like the local language yeah did you have any challenges mm-hmm. and how did you meet the challenge when you moved to australia yeah so the main language or the national language of australia is english mm-hmm. yes and even what i'm speaking right now we term is english they don't quite understand what we are speaking yeah What I have mean? no idea but I think it's the accent. Did you know Kenyans have an accent? And when you're in your country you don't know that until you go. So I thought my English was pretty good. Like even when I did my IELTS or my occupational English test, I passed. I passed well. But when I landed, it was not uncommon for me to speak to someone and they'd be like, "Sorry, what did you say?" Mhm. I can't hear you. I'm like you're not deaf. No, I'm not deaf, but I can't quite understand what you're saying. Mm-hmm. And I I used to think at first I used to think that they're pretending. Then I realized even when they speak, mm-hmm. I can't understand what they're saying. Um, the shang also is different. Like you know they have the Aussie slang. Yeah. Like the same way we, we have shang in Kenya. Mm-hmm. Ah, when they're speaking that one, eh, uh, hi mate. Will float. The, and also the greetings are different. So as we say habari and we are used to handshaking yeah well did you know you can go present your hand and someone won't handshake some people even are afraid of doing handshakes in Ke- wow. in Aussie uh-huh. and it's not because of covid that is just their culture they, they never experience handshaking or they don't like touching other people mm-hmm. so you say hi 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 anet mm-hmm. hi mate 
Good day. They mm-hmm. say good day. Good day, salam. Imagine. Wow. Hi, mate. How are ya? You know how weird it sounds. Hi, mate. <laughs> Hi. Good day, mate. Good day, guys. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah and how are ya? Can you say how are ya? How are you? It's like Hawaiian pizza. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's not like Hawaiian pizza. Yeah. Not Hawaiian pizza, but just say like with, with it has like an accent. How are you? Wow. Hi, Annette. How are you? Mm-hmm. It's how are you, Annette. Okay, thank you guys. Um, this marks part one of this uh, video. Stay tuned in for part two. We'll continue with the questions that we have uh, and the conversation we're having with regards to culture. Make sure you subscribe and like, share this video. Until next time, God bless you. See ya.